Hello, I'm going to read to you today from the book called The Position of Your Heart and the Healing of a Nation, and we are on day 17. Day 17 is called Be Holy, You Vessel of Honor. 1 Peter 1.16 says, Because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. God wants us to come into that place of total surrender with Him, where He can save us, heal us, deliver us, and make us to be like Him. Hebrews 12.14 says, Strive to live in peace with everybody and pursue that consecration and holiness without which no one will ever see the Lord. Holiness is total devotion to God. Consecrated to His service, being of one mind with God, set apart from ordinary purposes, dedicated to the Lord, separated for a holy purpose. Second Timothy 2.20 says, Now in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some for honorable use, some for dishonorable. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from what is dishonorable, he will be a vessel for honorable use, set apart as holy, useful to the master of the house, ready for every good work. A holy person will strive to be like God every day, they will be totally endeavored to turn away from every known sin and to know everything about the one they serve. They will have a desire to please him and to do his will and have an even greater fear of displeasing or disobeying him. Holiness is being of one mind with God. It is coming into agreement with God in all areas of your life. That means that we hate what he hates and we love what he loves. And we measure everything in this world by the standard of his word. The word tells us to be an imitator of Christ, to do what he did. We are to strive for holiness. God's spirit lives in us. So we have to learn to take care of our temple for God's temple is holy. 1 Corinthians three sixteen and 17 says, Do you not know that you are God's temple and that God's Spirit dwells in you? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy him. For God's temple is holy, and you are that temple. 1 Corinthians six nineteen says, Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own, for you were bought with a price. So glorify God in your body. 1 Peter 2, 9 says, But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Jesus paid the price. It was paid in full at the cross when he declared, It is finished. His blood that was shed is sufficient for all of your needs. Whether you need salvation, healing, deliverance, forgiveness, or provisions, his blood covered it all. It's time for you to come to the foot of the cross and ask him for whatever it is that you need. Surrender yourself to him Repent of any wrongdoing and ask for forgiveness and let him begin a work in you to make you holy before him. Romans 12, 1 says, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. God is coming back for a bride a pure and holy one without spot or blemish or wrinkle. We must be ready. We start by positioning our heart in his hands. 
Ephesians 5, 27 says, So that he might present the church to himself in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. He's waiting and looking for those so committed to him that they are willing to lay it all down and turn from all the things that have distracted them or held them hostage or kept them in bondage. Where is God's bride? Where is this perfect surrendered church that God is looking for? It's time to let go and let God bring her forth in his power and might. We have to die to self before we can live for Christ. It's not easy. There's a huge price to pay, but the benefits are out of this world, and it pays big dividends. We have to learn to lay it all down, lay it all down on the altar, and then ask God what is still in us that needs to go. Everything that you are holding on to becomes an idol, and He is a jealous God. He wants you all to himself. He wants to remove those false idols. He wants you to get to that place where it's just you and him. Then he will direct your path and you will gladly follow. Why not let today be that day that you surrender everything to him? Then allow him to resurrect those areas of your life that have died or need help. It's a process of trusting God with your life, your family, your finances, your destiny, and everything else you have. As you surrender your life to Him, you will find the strength to overcome. The power to overcome is found in submitting and surrendering everything to Him. Once you do, your life will never be the same. Just say, Lord, I give it all to you. I fully surrender my life to you, and I want to live the rest of my life for you. Make me a vessel honorable for your service and useful for your kingdom. Galatians 2.20 says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Just surrender your heart to him and say, I am yours and you, my Lord, are mine. I will praise you with everything within me. Have your way in me, Lord, today. Thank you for joining me. Tomorrow will be day 18 and it's called, What Are You Sowing? I'll see you tomorrow.